Hello, this is Mr. Bus, and I'm going to walk you through how to do Lab 13, Soil and Acid Rain. You might recall when we studied Earth's atmosphere that the air contains nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, and other gases in very small amounts. You might also recall that deforestation, combustion of fossil fuels in automobiles and power plants are some of the factors leading to a rise in atmospheric CO2 levels. When CO2 in the atmosphere combines with water or H2O, the result is carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid, but it does enough to make the rain slightly acidic, uh, giving it a pH of about 5 or 6. Recall that with the pH scale, in the middle a pH of 7 is considered neutral, a pH of 1 is considered highly acidic, and a pH of 14 is considered very basic. So in this regard, water is typically neutral and it would be about 7, and the carbonic acid has now shifted the pH to about a 5 or 6 range, which this is a logarithmic scale, and so a change from 7 to 6 and then 6 to 5 is actually a change of pH 100 times. Although carbon dioxide, which forms carbonic acid in the atmosphere, you know, gives you a significant change in pH, what really can make a difference is the addition of sulfur dioxide, or SO2. When sulfur dioxide combines with water, the result is a very strong acid called sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Sulfuric acid is a much stronger acid than carbonic acid, and now rainwater with sulfuric acid in it is going to have a pH of about 4, which is a thousand times more acidic than a neutral pH of 7. So what's the source of the sulfur dioxide? It's the burning of fossil fuels. So in this lab, we're going to take a weak sulfuric acid solution and pour it through two different soil samples. One soil sample uh, will just contain organic material, and another will t contain limestone or calcium carbonate, which acts as a buffer. Obtain a coffee filter and carefully place it into the milk jug. Obtain two scoops of soil A. Carefully transfer the soil into the coffee filter to the bottom of the coffee filter. Go ahead and place a 250 milliliter beaker. Find the acid rain container and please make sure to put on some goggles for this experiment. Pour 100 milliliters of acid rain into a 250 milliliter beaker. Hook up a pH meter to the LabQuest device. The pH meters are fragile and very expensive so please be careful with them. Alright when using the pH sensor one common mistake people do is they just try to rip this pH sensor out of this container, um, which will work, but it's a terrible way to do it because you're going to break the sensor. So the best way to do it, the way you're supposed to take this out, is to unscrew the cap, and then unscrewing the cap, set this bottle aside so you don't spill it, and then this will just come right off. Okay. Um, when this is tight, then it's going to tighten the gasket here, and it's going to be hard to take off. Make sure that you rinse off the storage solution using a bottle of purified water. And then you can rinse it over a towel at your table or over the sink. Okay. And then to check the pH, just simply put the pH sensor in the solution that you're checking.
Place the pH meter in the acid solution and obtain a live readout. Put that in your lab right up. Rinse off the pH meter again and carefully replace the cap and liquid back on the pH meter. The pH meter should always be, the pH probe should always be capped off in between uses. Never let it sit out to dry. Over the course of a couple minutes, carefully and very slowly pour the acid rainwater over the soil sample so that all the soil is contacted by the rain and it slowly has a chance to percolate through and collect. Resist the urge to dump all of it in there at once. You won't get very good data. You want it to just slowly trickle out. After you've collected the acid rain that has filtered through, through the soil sample, you're going to check the pH once again. So the same steps, go ahead and remove the cap and container. Rinse the pH meter again. Put the pH meter in the acid rain that is filtered through the soil sample and record this reading in your data table. Rinse off the pH meter again and return it to its cap with the liquid storage solution. Simply dispose of the filter paper with the soil sample in the garbage. Rinse out the milk jug filter. Rinse out your glassware. Replace your setup and run it a second time. This time using Soil B. Soil B is similar to Soil A except that it contains limestone which uh, has within it calcium carbonate and calcium bicarbonate which are going to act as a buffer. And you'll see what effect that's going to have on the pH. Alright, so for this lab you determine what the soil pH would be after exposure to a acid rain solution, a sulfuric acid rain solution, but it's important to note what the pH would be under normal circumstances if the rainwater were coming down as a pH of 7 or neutral. So I took some distilled water, 100 milliliters, poured it into the soil sample, much like you did with the acid rain, and when it was all said and done, the pH of the resulting water was checked, and it turned out to be right around 7. I already have that in your data table, and so that's where those numbers are coming from. Please make sure to clean up and have a good day.